So 11 6 72 Geelong trailing Footscray 14 4 88 at the MCG. There were 16 points the difference in favour of Footscray after they led a quarter time by 10. Marking contest Hinkley in front of Coleman takes the mark. Long fought back well in the closing stages of the second quarter. Can they keep it going? Couch up to half forward. Brownless underneath it. Got a fist to it to knock it further forward. Scott. Reynolds went past it. Tui. Barnes offloaded. Stanfield well shepherded by Tui. Left foot's are pretty close to the boundary line. Cameron is there and marks. Good effort. And away he goes. On his scooter quickly. Grant behind. Knock on by Stoneham. Miles may get there first, but the boundary line is too close. He started on the bench today for Geelong, and we'll see a throw in at left half forward for foot for. Uh, yes, Tony Campbell now picking up Ablett with Keenan Reynolds at uh, fullback on Brownless. Brownless is uh, in the focal point, got injured in the first quarter, and seems to uh, be okay. Hinkley's kick across his body out towards centre wing. Coleman doing battle out there with. Uh, his opponent in Handley having trouble getting into it. Stephen Handley as is uh, Miles. We haven't seen too much of him today, have we? Boundary throw in centre wing. Barnes from behind. Coleman in front. Coleman gets the tap down. Simpson held with the football. Liberatore. Atkins. Still there to be won. And it's Geelong may take it away. Buse just fumbled a little bit. Liberatore made it difficult for him. And eventually, well done, Tony Liberatore. Just when the catch looked like going away. The umpire is going to bounce just forward of the wing. Magnificent conditions now here in Melbourne. Barnes, punch on, Liberatore nearly caught. Sweeping hand pass Atkins. Atkins from behind the wing, kicks it in towards centre half forward. Good penetrating kick, punched away from Royal, but he gets the rebound from 50 metres. The kick is ordinary. Tim McGrath in front, where all good defenders should be. Now's a chance for Miles. Just a fraction slow. Taps it out. Grant gathers the football for Footscray. Chris Grant blasts away and kicks it across the face out of bounds on the full. I and mean, really, he probably should have done a little bit more, maybe. Ross. Steady a little bit there, yes. And Colin looks still hasn't had a run on the bench there for Footscray. So they'll work it away from defence again. And the way they go, this is Wills. Showing a good turn of speed. One ball. And still he goes at centre wing. Oh, this is the run of the day from Wills. He got it out of defence, up towards full forward. Reynolds up high. A chance for the Cats now. Mansfield, close. Snap is there. Full points. And brought out of defence by Wills. A splendid run. 14-4 to 12-6. Well, is that just great footy? And so often you have a player run down field like that, and he either messes up one of the bounces, or his kick, having done all the hard work, is not a good one. And a great shepherd there from Stoneham as players came toward him. Shepherd it off beautifully here and well robed here. Mansell just finishing off nicely. Well played, Geelong. Well, he's a good player, Michael Mansfield. He kicked six goals against Collingwood at a game up at Victoria Park last year. Mansfield's second goal. What a goal it was. The difference back to ten points in the qualifying final. Hocking puts the hand out, gets the footy up towards half forward. Tui behind and is outmarked again by Mansfield. Yeah, because he wanted front spot. Can he make it two in the matter of minutes? Brownless makes a lead. Reynolds behind him. He's chipped it in short and found Hocking. So the Cats, well, they've come out, as the Bulldog song says, snarling. So can Gary Hocking go long? No, he's gone in short. He's looking for Brownless. He can't mark it. Reynolds ducks back. Scott, he's nearly caught. Has to get rid of it quickly. Around the neck. Oh, gee. He's played, it for, yeah, he's played it for too high. That's the umpire's decision. I'd like to see that again. So would I. So Robert Scott to take the free kick. Yes, he was there that it is. high there. Pretty up. We had phone trouble yesterday. Geelong's phone has broken down here today. Their attack hasn't, I don't think. Has he got the goal? No. It slipped away for a behind. So Robert Scott, one behind to him, his first score of the afternoon, a point seventy-nine to eighty-eight. Footscray with the uh, challenge being thrown at them by Geelong. Reynolds kicks it in towards the half-back area on the far side of the ground. Tapped on there by Stanfield. Simpson back to Couch. Couch has spotted a player. 
Right half forward, it's Barnes looking to play on. Barnes now kicks with the left foot in towards centre half forward. It's punched away, but Geelong are at the fall of the ball. Gary Hocking found some space and has kicked the goal. Must have been a goal in the day, that was nice, wasn't it? Oh. Should never got out of that, Robbo. Should never got out of trouble. Actually, I thought Mansfield was a little lucky earlier when he kicked his goal. That's fair. He seemed to back out of trouble where, in defence, the players really have to... Even if you get a clear shot, Ross, you should be under That's a bit right. of pressure. Now, he fumbled initially. He'd already spent the ball before he picked it up, and he should not have got through that traffic. And to finish off with a goal, that really kills you. Three points, Footscray's lead. They led by 16 points at half time. So early in the third term, Geelong have hit back hard. Gary Hocking, stone and four Geelong. Onto that left foot, and he kicks it with good penetration. It's at the back. Pressure now on Reynolds. Still pressure there by the Geelong forwards to hold the ball in. And that's exactly what they've done. The umpire will bounce about 25, maybe 30 metres from the Geelong goal. And Doug Hawkins back again as a spare man in defence. Right down here, this bounce just at the back of that pack there. The Foot square at one stage led by 29 points. Barnes over the top. Snapshot came from Mansfield again, and that was rushed through for one uh, one behind. So Geelong's second rush behind of the day. Anxious moments for supporters of both teams. Keenan Reynolds to kick in. Two points the difference. He's gone to the outer side and found Hawkins. Hawkins kicks to centre wing. Kellett was the target. Couldn't take it. He will for second bite. Kellett from left centre wing. Looks for Charles. Well paddled away by Stoneham to get it clear of Royal. Oh, Beautifully done. Right. The big fellow did absolutely magnificently. Grant behind. Good use of the body to get rid of his opponent. Kellett. Kicks to half forward. Charles should take it and does. Maybe too far out to score. This is Brownless distance we're talking about here. Kick number seven. He's given it every chance. That's a decent sort of a roof. It's touched. Maybe by McGrath. Charles looks on interestedly. It was a top effort by Del Rey in the uh, yeah. right on the goal line. Body it? to body, my word. And Tim McGrath to kick in. And this game, a thriller at the moment. A top first half. Didn't take the mark handy. Oh, gee, that was uh, too high. <laughs> Holding the ball. Liver will take the free kick. And Higley gives it back to him. Doesn't argue. The Bradlow medalist kicks to half forward. And Wills well, gets on his bike again and kicks this time. Beautiful kick. Center. He's been creative from that half back line. Out to Couch. Couch after two bounces. Will bang it into the forward pocket area. Oh, I was almost going to criti criticise Paul Couch and he took one bounce too many because all his forward had come toward him. He took the extra bounce, then they had to go back with the flight of the ball and Brownless, that was just exceptional. Very skilled player, Brownless, going for goal number six and it's away to the right. Through for his third behind. Six goals, uh, five goals, three to Brownless. Yes, and uh, while that was happening, Robbo, Colin Hook on for his first run, Brian Royal off. Could be a uh, vital move for Footscray, looking for maybe a little bit more pace. Steve Collinuke, hasn't he performed some uh, miraculous things here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground? Collingwood, remember one. Great mark taken by Barnes from the kick-in. Left foot kick. Wills can't mark. Hickmock, handball. Scott, got to be a bit quicker, Robert. Riccardi, back goes towards the centre. Buse. Left foot kick, high into the square. Reynolds and Brownless. Well done, Keenan Reynolds. Close to the boundary line. Ablett falls over. Football forced over by Mansfield. And we'll have a throw in about 20 metres around from the Geelong goal. So it'll be a dour struggle to the final siren now, I would think. These two sides locked together. Only a couple of points the difference. Geelong last led at the 15-minute mark of the first quarter. One stage they trailed by 29 points and fought their way well back into this contest. Gary Hocking on screen kicked a superb goal earlier in this quarter. which would certainly qualify for goal of the day. 89 to 87. Barnes 
backhands it towards goal. It's all foot spray. Campbell, did he get tripped up? Brown is acknowledging that. Liberatore runs it away through Baxter. Baxter from inside his own defensive 50 metre zone. Kicks to centre wing. Marking contest out there. Stoneham, good use of the body. But with the two opponents, Spears in the pass. And Wills, who's been very constructive, especially in this quarter. Started on the bench. Came on to replace Hocking. And Stephen Hocking when he was uh, shouldered by Hawkins earlier in the game. Critical. Gets on his bike from right half back. Kicks to centre wing. Hinkley's there for Geelong. Kicks across his body. Kicks it high. Didn't really look where he kicked that one. Oh, courage shown by Hawkins. 20 metre hand pass to Baxter. Two of the old stages from the Western Oval there. Baxter's kicked to half forward. Huge pack of players. None can take the mark. Well, somebody cop one there. It was Melancholis, I think, in the fray. The Cats go forward. Hocking kicks to half forward. That's well delivered. And the mark is taken by Michael Mansfield. Wills. Pretty oh, oh. up. There's Wills. It was uh, ill directed, as you pointed out, Robert. Liberatore runs it out of defence again. Atkins, yes, a one hander. Atkins from midfield. Del Rey is the target. Nearly Danny. Couldn't drag it down. Grant applies a tackle. Down goes Melacalis. Throwing the ball, says the umpire. Now it's play on. McGraw will have to get going quickly, and he does. Brings it to the member stand side. Oh, catch! Oh, reminiscent of Card and Keith Bragg, that one. Except he got up. Baxter, down to half forward, and Atkins has taken the mark. What gee. terrific football. Was that great? Oh, gee, I winced. Simon Atkins. Too far out the score, maybe. He can kick long, as we've seen earlier today. Gets it into the square. No mark taken. And McGrath will run it away with a long hand pass. In a little bit of trouble as Buse, but he's able to slip the tackle. Handball away, Simpson. Over the top, Malakalis. Back to Buse and Geelong with composure. Kick it out towards the wing. No mark taken. Liberatore is there for Footscray. Play behind is Hawkins and Malakalis, but the kick comes in towards Baxter, and Baxter marks a little bit away from centre half forward. He's kicking towards full forward. No mark. Geelong players mess it up. The ball rebounds. Simpson gathers nicely. Kick back near the centre of the ground. Coleman misses what he should have taken. Geelong made that make the Bulldogs suffer here. It's in the centre to be won. Wallace, handball further. Coleman. Coleman's kick. Up towards half forward. No mark taken. Ball at the back. Chance now for Geelong again. Simpson it is, running away from half back. Looking to give it off now. He's forced to kick high towards half forward. No mark taken. Barnes falls over. Stanfield. Campbell there for Footscray. The intensity is enormous. A big punch from behind by Handley. Riccardi slips the tackle from Baxter. Riccardi's little kick. All right. The mark taken by Applett in front of Campbell. Geelong players running everywhere. Riccardi and Hockey. But Applett has the football as Hawkins and Malakalis. Applett gets past, goes for the long bomb, it's swing around, Robert Scott will get a goal. Geelong are in front. Geelong are in front, 93 to 89, and we've got 13 minutes left in the third quarter. And there was great persistence too, and in the meantime, while all this was happening, Doug Hawkins is almost unconscious behind play he got to his feet but it's very wobbly fell down again but that's what robert scott's there for to rove the crumbs kept his footing finished off well played geelong well, doug hawkins was in the hands of the trainers for a number of minutes got up and started to remonstrate with another player that was going on behind the play geelong back in front for the first time since the 15 minute mark of the first quarter 89 plays 93 the cats by four points we found a new leg this quarter, Geelong. Playing with much more enthusiasm. Simpson from the square. Kicks from a standing start up towards right half forward. Hickmott gets ridden into the ground. Nearly a throw. Scott again, who scored the last goal. He's certainly lifted. And many of his teammates have as well. Brownus! The dogs are in the kennels at the moment. Yes, and Ken Reynolds got caught out badly then. He just kept watching scott without taking notice where the ball was going in the meantime brownless had made a very quick lead and was left 15 meters behind five goals three brownless has kicked shoulder seems to be okay after a heavy knock 
He's now got six goals three. Well, Footscray kicked seven goals two in the first two quarters, and they've only added one behind so far this term, and Geelong have gone to a handy lead after they trailed by 29 points. Scott's lifted, hasn't he, Ross? Yes, it's that roving commission he's had in that forward line, which is what he's best renowned for. But the centre line of Geelong's just picked up, and they're pushing the ball forward more often now, giving the forwards a chance. Simpson's been good, too, this quarter. Brownless with nine kicks and six goals. Bounce, favours Stoneham. High was Charles. Scott is there. He helps it on. Hawkins tries to crash his way through. Tackled, but he didn't have the football. And a little high as well. Ooh, Hawkins has the free kick in the centre of the ground. Bulldogs need to kick the next goal. High kick by Hawkins. Marking contest. Footscray mark. Del Rey. Stood pretty well on the ground. Actually, he did that very well because Miles had a good leap from behind and tried to punch the left hand. Missed completely, and Del Rey just read it better than anyone else around. To see this again, McGrath with him. Eyes on the ball. Miles, the fly, just carried Grant as well. Del Rey did well. Actually, he's very good value for money, Danny Del Rey. He's only had seven kicks. He's kicked six. So from eight kicks, he can have seven goals on the board. Oh, it's another good kick. Just what Footscray needed. They looked as though they may have been lagging a little, but they get their 15th goal and they trail by just four points. Yes, and the skipper led the way then. He burst through the centre with great purpose. Had a head of steam up, and his delivery was good there. Gave Dorrell a chance, but he did so very well. Seven goals for Danny Delray, and he's hit the bridges to behind. So we've got stars at both ends of the ground. Four points the difference. Stoneham, a knock on. Liberatore knocks it further forward for Footscray. And they will see Hinkley in the road, but he's dispossessed pretty quickly. This time they have backup support, and the catch will get clear. That was driven away by Simpson. Stanfield. Oh, that's a high bomb. Courage needed here. Oh, Wallace has it and gets collected by Adler. And that was almost a note of apology, was it? Ablett nods to the umpire. Steve Wallace at right half back for the Bulldogs. Four points in it. Tremendous game of football. Back on centre wing. No mark. McPherson overruns it. Grant, good pick up. Might have been touched off the boot that one. In fact, it was. So it will be a boundary throw in next to the interchange area on centre wing. Stephen Hawking still sits the bench. He was collected by Hawkins in the first quarter. Probably won't take any further part in the game. Wallace again. Not a long kick. Hinkley, late on the scene, couldn't take the mark. Stone and taps it down. Atkins is in the road. Hawkins has recovered from that knock he got. Out to Coleman. A quick kick. Only goes about five metres and intercepted superbly by Wills, who's been great in this quarter. And Mansfield takes the mark in front of Baxter. Looks for a hand pass, gets it away. This is Couch. Couch on left centre wing for Geelong. The Cats doing most of the attacking in the third term. Knocked away from Ablett by Campbell. And it will be a boundary throw in Geelong's left forward pocket. And there's Steve Hocking with veteran trainer George Clark in the foreground indicating. And Brown in the middle of that trio. So boundary throw in. John Barnes, number six. Stanfield, number 17. Scott, who's been brilliant in this quarter. A good kick. And Brownless just can't get over the fall and Keenan Reynolds before a behind. No, it's not a behind. I think it's out of bounds. Out of bounds. The well-known Bulldog supporter. And the biggest, I dare say, Barnes. Liberatore, the Brownlow medalist and Footscray go forward again up towards midfield, but Couch is there. And Couch is coming into the game. He had a reasonable first half, but he comes up for his seventh kick and 14 hand passes. Into trouble. McFer uh, Wallace it was. Now the ball comes back to Tui. Tui's kick is long and direct. Centre half forward, marking contest. Stoneham taps it down. McPherson gets the hand pass away. Colin Newt will kick the goal. No, he won't. 
It's a very ordinary kick. McGrath right on the goal line. Clears for Geelong. And clears Long out towards the wing. Geelong have got two on one. Simpson keeps his footing beautifully. Simpson. Short pass. Up towards half forward. Gather by Mansfield was good. And he goes back onto the right foot. But he can't get away quick enough. The hand pass wasn't bad. Atkins has the football at left half back. Handball over the top to Kellett. Kellett looking for someone to kick it to. Up towards half forward, no mark taken by Charles. Malakellis a good shepherd. Enables Simpson to kick it into the centre. Risky stuff, but Geelong will get out of trouble. Couch. Here goes Miles. Miles from 50 metres. Went a little bit too far. The kick in towards half forward. Scott leaves it behind. Tui off the ground goes for the safety of the boundary line. And the Bulldogs get out of trouble when it looked rather threatening. Just great stuff by Riccardi in the centre there. Had to go for the footy. Now he's limping a bit just after the collision there. Boundary throw in in the right forward pocket for the Cats. They lead by four points. Seven and a half minutes left. Scott, handball away. Hughes will kick the goal. Henry Hughes kicks his first goal. And Geelong get their 16th, which is their fifth for the quarter. Yes, and it's been uh, indicative of Geelong getting back into this game that Robert Scott's had a few touches. His rove packs done well. And here again featuring Abuse also coming into the game a little. Just finishing off with a pretty simple goal. Riccardi looking the worst for wear. So back into the centre. Five goals to one in this quarter in favour of Geelong. Stoneham on the couch after Charles' knock was ineffective. And a mark taken by Hickman if it's not a free kick. A uh, free kick to Tui, Pete. It'd have to be, wouldn't it? Tui, who was involved in a controversial incident earlier in the game. Hawkins. Long kick. Wills underneath it. Sets himself. Not going to be a Geelong ball though. It's taken away by Malakavis. A uh, uh, Footscray ball. Malakavis up towards centre half forward. No mark taken. Campbell, the gloves. Kicks to right half forward. And Colin, who spent a good deal of time on the bench today, finds Atkins. Atkins at half forward, looking to get it moving quickly. Play on. Now he has to. He'll be looking for Delray. Oh, Charles has got it. And Justin Charles has kicked one goal. Got a chance to make it two and get some goal kicking advice from Danny Delray, who's been brilliant today. Delray kicking five in the second quarter. Goes for this one, but Charles over the top. Yes, he started off well, Justin Charles, but then uh, Barry Stoneham's quietened him considerably. And Stoneham himself has had an influence from centre half back. The chance here for Charles to come back again. A vital kick this one. Only one goal to Footscray in this quarter. And after they kicked seven in the first. And seven in the second. Distance won't be a problem. Accuracy, I think, is. And so Charles's tally is 1-1 so far. And Fitzgerald badly needed a goal. Never really looked confident, did he, uh, Ross? No, he wasn't steady when he dropped the ball on his foot. He was just a little tentative. Nine points the difference. McGrath kicks in, favours the outer side. Stoneham and Coleman. It's won by Coleman. On the ground, he looked for a hand pass. The recipient is Wallace. Wallace straight down the guts. And the mark taken by Super. Steve McPherson, who has a chance to bring up a major for Footscray if he's good enough. Maybe too far out to score. He's given it a decent old roost. That's a ripper kick. Delray, can he make it eight? Colonial, grab. Couch should be able to clear and does for Geelong. And Couch's kick goes pretty well along the ground. Cannot be kept in by Darren Baxter. Riccardi to smile. And that was and a great tackle there by Mel Callis. Just purposeful, didn't get in in the back. It just brought Collingwood to ground. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Might, very important. Boundary throw in. Couch gives it away. McPherson into centre half forward. Hawkins does well and gets his foot to the ball, but can't do what Fitzgray would have loved Dougie Hawkins to do. On this occasion, he just kicks a behind. Two goals, one to Doug Hawkins. Footscray just pegging away, pegging away. McGrath kicks it to himself and runs about 25 metres. You're in trouble, son. Gets the handball away. Miles. 
Miles goes long. That's no nonsense footy. It's well out of danger now. And an excellent mark taken by Barnes. And he certainly impressed me. Handball in towards the centre. Hockey. Bounce has got to be favourable here for Simpson. He's able to collect the footy and kick it off the left side. Up towards half forward. And a great mark taken by young Hickmott. He's shown a bit today. Playing just his second That's game. That's right. Yep. He's too far out to score. A short pass. And Gary Hocking starting to run free for the Cats. And has marked 50 metres out. Well, he's got his rate up now to 11 and 9. I think he had something like uh, 7 and 5 at half time, so he certainly has done that. Couch! From point blank range, Couch has banged it through. Well, I think he's the player that's lifted Geelong, Paul Couch. He's been absolutely enormous in this third quarter. Up to 10 kicks and 16 handballs. But his beautiful left foot kicking has certainly had a lot of penetration. Yes, it so is that man on screen too, Robert. He's not only just the touches he's had in hocking, but it's his preparedness to run and just be around the ground and give them a leg band. Poor couch kicking to long, 17th goal. They've kicked six this quarter. And Footscray has added only the one. Knocked down by Charles. Good tackle by Hocking. And he and Couch have certainly made a difference in this quarter to the Cats. And goal kicked by Gary Hocking earlier in the term was an absolute beauty. And certainly lifted them. After they trailed by five goals in the second quarter. So another bounce all in this time. Stoneham over the top. It's for Riccardi. Hocking again, well pinned, good tackle, Atkins, ball spills free, Riccardi again, the Cats again into attack, here they come once more, Scott, he's another player who's lifted, up the Browners, who gets just a little bit of a nudge and too far underneath the ball, Adler can't gather it in before the boundary line, and it'll be a throw in, left forward pocket for Geelong. Maybe that shoulder just, just preventing from really extending his arms as much as he'd like to. So what he got, uh, six goals, Browners, six goals, three. Barnes, Adlett, can't bend it round the corner. It's high and wide, not too handsome. Ball hits the deck again. Hughes and Krettyok going for it. And Krettyok, I think, will be more than content to see it over, but it's still in play. Got a chance for Simpson, who gets grabbed. He had it, lost it, and they all crossed the boundary line. Had a quick look at the umpire to see if he was going to get a free kick. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? <laughs> so, boundary throw in. Right forward pocket this time for Geelong, although a little bit out towards the half-forward flank. Barnes in front, Kretiuk with a quick left footer, but it's only to the advantage of Geelong. Picked up by Paul Couch, a little chip shot finds Gary Hocking. And Hocking may be a little too far out to score. He's kicked it into the pocket. Brownless, now it's Ablett. Ablett is marked about 30 metres out, but again, the angle quite tight. And again, too, Robert, the two players featuring a couch and hocking, which is so important to this side. Yeah, Tony Campbell never a chance to get there and spoil. Well, we've seen this man do some unbelievable things in football, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if he kicks this. Gary Ablett, he has kicked it. So. Well, Ross, just... Time and time again, he does things that are just unexpected, aren't they? Yes, it's the sort of stuff that Colin would expect from Peter Dacos, just those team lifting things. And he's kicked a goal on each of these three quarters thus far. Ten kicks, a couple of handballs and three marks, and he's always threatening. And as I mentioned before, Tony Campbell, never a chance to get near that one. But to expect to go, kick a goal from there, great result. Three goals to Gary Adler. Under a minute and a half left in the third quarter. Footscray starting to look down the barrel. 20 points in it. They wouldn't want Geelong to get another goal before three-quarter time. Maybe they will. Scott out of the centre. Knocked down by Stanfield. Back up towards the circle. Coleman fumbles. Kellett pounces on the ball. Assistance from Liberatore. It will be another bounce. Well, I don't know what Geelong had said to them at half-time by Malcolm Blight. Whatever it is, it's worked. Seems to be almost a flat-footed Footscray. Or well, has been in the third quarter. Let's hope for their sakes they can come back. Geelong in attack again. 
Libertore, who hasn't stopped, brushes the Hickmont tackle effectively. On to Tui, who's forced to kick across across the ground. Finds Kretiuk, though. So that should stem the tide momentarily. Kretiuk kicks to centre wing. One-on-one -on -one duel out there. Good mark taken by Steve McPherson. And loads with a hand pass. Picked up for Footscray by Mansfield. Into the pocket, Miles content to see it out with Chris Grant. And that might be the last act, or one of them, for the quarter. A boundary throw-in, depending on how quickly the boundary umpire throws it in. Only a few seconds remaining. Justin Charles with Barry Stoneham. Stoneham getting front position and goes for the boundary line to the surprise of absolutely no one. Hinkley didn't quite find it. Didn't go far enough, but Hinkley should prevent any further scoring unless there's a foot spray mark here to Coleman, which he has done. Oh, he has a shot. No, copy. So uh, even Gallancy believing he can't kick that one. Uh, Doug Hawkins, who got met heavily in that quarter, now with the club doctor, that's not a good sign for Footscray. Let's hope he's OK, because we didn't see too much of him in that term. A three-quarter time, Malcolm Blight would be fairly close. A good quarter by the Cats, and they lead at the moment. 18-9, 117 to 15-7, 97. Don, they were pretty quiet at half-time, you said. Do you think that was uh, perhaps a little bit of overconfidence? Or? No, I don't think so. I think it's just the way that uh, Terry Wheeler coaches. He doesn't rant and rave, and he just talks specifically to certain players. Right, thank you, gentlemen. Don mentioned Doug Hawkins. Here's the incident on replay, and I think you'll find this rather interesting. Now, Hawkins goes down here. Watch what happens now. And as Ross and I mentioned, Robbo, he got up feeling rather groggy. Yes, he couldn't keep his feet and uh, was staggering quite uh, considerably for uh, two or three minutes. So, the stats to three-quarter time. Yes, not much in there, but uh, just a bit more quality from Geelong and uh, the hit-outs favouring Barnes. But Puts Gray have been too bad getting the ball out of the centre. The final quarter of the qualifying final of 1992, Geelong leading by 20 points after they trailed by 16 at half time and 10 by quarter time. Stoneham in the ruck. Kellett not going anywhere. Gary Hocking, who was one of the cats to lift in the, uh, the third term. It was a superb effort by him. Hawkins taken out of it. I think and there might be a free kick as a result of that. Yes, yeah. he was taken out of the contest at uh, no near the footy. Sean Simpson at right centre wing. Put Geelong back into attack. Brown is in front. Hickmott has certainly shown a bit today. The youngster has really done well. Brownless around Atkins. Is he? Yes. Only just couch. The Brownlow medalist inside 50. Shot at goal. Is off target and goes through for one point to make the difference. 21 points in the early stages of the final quarter. And Barry Stoneham also maybe a bit of bother. Let's see what happened to him. Just caught one in the face, did he? I think he did head, yeah. just head-to-head head there. So Keenan Reynolds to kick in, and he favours the outer side. Pretty hard man, Barry Stoneham. It'll take a severe blow to keep him out of this game, I would think. Hickmott just harassing there. Mansfield. Yes, and Terry Rill is elected in this last quarter to start with Brian Raw in that forward pocket with Colin Hook coming off the ground. And the bounce will take place at left half forward for Geelong. Coleman. Down towards Liberatore, but it rebounds back towards Baxter. Baxter's kick across his body is going to be marked quite safely on the centre wing by Hockey. Handball over the top. Will it sit for Stoneham? No, he leaves it behind. But he's been backed up brilliantly by Simpson. Away to Handley. In turn to Hinkley. Hinkley at half forward. Handball away to Riccardi. Riccardi's kick in towards full forward. No mark taken. Ball rebounds. Mansfield. Scott smothers it beautifully. Credit you. Off the ground, Ablett. Kick the ball. Is he injured? Four goals to Gary Ablett. 19 to Geelong. And if that doesn't break the Bulldogs back, well, I wonder what it takes. Well, again, the effort for the Geelong players on that band on there. Riccardi, one of them, but here, the ball could almost have gone out of play with 
Campbell's punch, but the follow-up there from Mansfield was terrific. And Scott to trap the ball like that was very clever. Very clever indeed. And that's how Apple just got the knock on the face, but to seize the opportunity was well done. Maradona would have been proud. 124 to 97. Stoughton put Geelong out of the centre, seemingly with the ball on a string. And he's kicked up towards Mansfield at left half forward. The Bulldogs seem to have stopped. They led by 29 points in the second quarter. And the Cats have worn them down with sheer persistence. And a great lift in the third term. Barnes, a big leap. Couldn't take the mark. Up towards Hocking at half forward. Couch gives him backup support. A looping hand pass. Onto Riccardi. Kicks from right on 50. He'll put it into the square. Scott at the back of the pack. Can't gain control. McPherson looks for assistance. Kicks to the member stand flank. Not too much an offer. Has Keller taken the mark? I think he has. No, he hasn't. I'll tell you what, it was a clever kick from McPherson. Boundary throw in. Boundary umpire standing right on the 50 metre line. Barnes over the top. Simpson dragged off it. Atkins a chance. Gets ridden into the ground by Couch. And it's tied up again. 55 metres from goal. Terry Wallace and Terry Wheeler. Those would be, I think, worried at the moment. So much the scoreline, but it's great unable to get scores on the board since half time. Javon has been well on top since then. Kevin, away he goes again from left half back, kicks over the center area, marking contest. Plenty of Geelong players in it there. There is a whistle, and it's going to be a Footscray free kick to be taken by Justin Charles. It's a player going past to take a hand pass, couldn't find any. Delray, a real piggyback job that one. McPherson. Almost caught, unloads to Baxter. Baxter, good long penetrating kick up towards half forward. Wallace can't make ground. Delray has he got a chance for another one? A banana kick from the forward pocket. That's a brilliant kick, Danny Delray for his eighth goal. What a lifter! Can the Bulldogs come back? 21 points the difference. And that was just brilliant play there for Delray. Could have sworn the ball was going to go out of bounds, but to recover from here it was two on two. McGrath had the opportunity to knock the ball out of play. Riccardi tried to do the same thing, and Del Rey just seizing the opportunity. Splendid footy. Well done, Danny Del Rey. One hundred and twenty-four to one hundred and three. Twenty-one minutes left in the match. Plenty of time for Footscray if they're good enough. Atkins. Tries to burrow after the ball. It's won by Hocking for Geelong. Hocking kicks up towards full forward. This is danger. Ablett's there. Can't take a possession this time. Mansfield has been brilliant. Close to goal. Traps it. Unloads with a hand pass. Hickmott couldn't take it. It was too hot. Scott off the ground. But it goes towards the forward pocket. And thankfully for Footscray out of bounds. Yes, you can say that again. Uh, Gary Hocking getting clear near the centre. And all of a sudden the Bulldog defence under enormous pressure. 19-10 to 16-7, so there's still plenty of time. Barnes gets it down. Scott gets his foot to it. Still a chance. Ablett! Oh, he's hooked the kick too far. He's through for a behind. Some deft tapping of the ball there, wasn't, wasn't there, it? Just, Ross, just yep. a couple of clever little things. Not too hard. Had to be spot on. Nearly came off. Reynolds. To kick it back into play. 20 minutes left. Reynolds goes to the far side. Good kick for penetration. Views at the back. Recovered very quickly. Went for the mark. Then gathered the possession. Hinkley. Little kick. Good. Couch. Short kick again. Right on the boundary line. Scott is marked. And a difficult shot confronting Robert Scott. Field umpire coming across to just tell him where to kick from. He can't go any wider. He's up against the fence. In front avenue. Finish up in the front seat. Scott does well. Kicks it to the front of the goals. Ooh, floating with that was Ablett. Dangerous. Couldn't quite control it. It's through for a rush behind to Geelong. So Footscray need to go quickly down the ground, I think, to give them some sort of impetus. Reynolds has spotted a player at centre-half back. It's Kellett. Play on a little bit quicker. Oh, his kick is very ordinary. Simpson marks. And he may turn this over to the 
chagrin of the uh, Footscray people, but no, his kick was ordinary, and it goes out of bounds. Billy Brownless trotting back towards the goal square, and it's about 55 metres from the Geelong goal. And under 19 minutes left in the match, from the throw-in, Couch, long hand pass. Simpson has been productive, and that's a good kick, no exception, views right on 50. Another good palm of the ball, too, from Barnes, which found uh, Couch from that boundary throw and allowed that play to be set up. Andy Buse, kick number 11. Been a different Geelong side after half time, hasn't it? Tried for the spiral putt, didn't get onto it. <laughs> Lucks of fortune, but Scott made the most of his chance to take the mark. Yeah, some credit there, just paying the penalty for just assuming that the ball would carry further. If you're a backman in that situation, in a set kick, you must just be in front, irrespective of what you think might happen. You've just got to give yourself a chance. Robert Scott, who's kicked one goal, one. He's kicked number 14. He could make it two goals, one. And does. It's pretty hard for Footscray now. 29 points the difference. And paradoxically, that was what they led by in the early stage of the second quarter. Here we see Buse, who's lining for that torpedo, deceived a few people. Credit of one of those players, and as I said, the inexperience is shown that you must be in front. You can't afford to see, concede any ground, particularly as a backman. Twenty twelve to 16-7, Gary Hocking striving to get it out, but it's Charles for Footscray. McPherson, Baxter, goes behind. Good pressure applied by Riccardi. Kellett, Coleman's kick, pretty ordinary, and Hinkley mops up. Handball, Handley. Handley from a, uh, well, he probably should have done a little better, but Barnes gathers it quite nicely. Barnes has kicked towards full forward. Reynolds taps it towards Campbell. Good pressure applied by Brownless. Able to get through, handball, chopped off there by Liberatore. Atkins in trouble. Could have been awarded the free kick. No, it's going to come now for Geelong. Barnes. Oh, they're just toying with the opposition. Simpson to the goal square. Ablett can't mark. Campbell under pressure. Knocks it away. Here's Reynolds for Footscray. Reynolds' kick has been marked by Liberatore. Handball away. Here's a chance now for Stanfield. Stanfield's kick up towards the wing. Charles and Stoneham. Stoneham, who's been enormous since half-time at centre-half back. Royal. Gathered by Malakalis. Skillful. Kick broken down, Liberatore, quickly by Tony Liberatore to half forward, and Grant takes the mark. Footscray need one quickly. It may come here, Atkins is marked, 45 metres out. He's forced to play on. The kick falls short of McPherson. McPherson into an open goal, and he does get one for the Bulldogs. First goal for Steve McPherson. And the Footscray supporters are still here cheering madly for their side. They trail 2012 to 17 7. Yes, and Ken Hickley, Ken Hickley, a bit slow to react here. He lets uh, McPherson get around very, very easily. The kick hitting the ground in the first place. The Geelong players saying that was touched by uh, Hocking. It certainly looked there might have been a bit of a deviation as it travelled through the hands of uh, Hocking, but still nothing paid. Yeah, Gary Adler coming off. Hasn't played too much football lately, so. Light swinging a fresh man on in Brown. 132 to 109 now. Footscray still in the contest. The contest at centre bounce won by Stodham. Up towards Adrian Hickmott, the youngster full of promise. Mark taken by Handley. Going across the ground. Simpson. And there he is, Billy Brownless. Brownless has kicked uh, six. Six three he has. At the other end of the ground, Danny Delray has equaled the record in a qualifying final of eight goals held jointly by Michael Moncrief, Bernie Quinlan and Warren Ralph. That's a funny old kick. One behind. It's fourth of the afternoon. Yeah, there was some good play on that far side there by Hickmott at 20 years of age. We've he's mentioned done some, him a few times. He's done some today. very good things. Well, it's only his second game, Robbo, as you've mentioned. Uh, just the, uh, the ten touches, but still, it's enough to show a bit of promise. Royal off. Keenan Reynolds kicks in. Handley in front. Riccardi and Bues. Kellett. Is that in the back? Yes. 
it's going to be Riccardi's kick. Abuse to take it. Cramp Riccardi up. has cramp. Yes, no, or maybe. That's one of the best rules that have been uh, brought into the game. The player who can't take his kick, you can still give it to this team. The player closest to it takes the kick for... You can have grey areas, though, Robbo, if you've got a player who can't kick and go down accidentally, maybe, and uh, you've got a super boot like that. Yeah. Billy Brown, this could uh, pop it through. Anyway, Brown, this is a chance to add to his tally. 6-4 for the afternoon. It's a pretty productive day's work. It's a great mark here from Brown as he's renowned for that uh, that fine leap. But he just kept his eye on the ball there. The pressure coming from Stanfield, but he's equal to the occasion. Brownless did it very well. For his seventh. Distance shouldn't be a problem for him. Oh, brilliant goal right over the goal umpire's hat. 7 4 for Bill Brownless. 21 13 for Geelong. They lead by an even five goals. Yes, and with Barry Stone and going to centre half back, it was just important that. Brownless maintain his uh, momentum and keep uh, kicking the goals because Barnes has done a reasonable job at centre half forward in uh, just presenting himself and uh, that formula has worked very well. So well done to those three Geelong players. Oh, what a magnificent kick by Brownless. Here's Simpson. Could have nearly given the hand pass away, but elected to kick wide. Out to a vacant wing area. Hickmott, two on one. Tui in trouble. Hickmott, is that overzealous? And just a little too severe on Tui into his back. And the Footscray defender will take the free kick. He kicks it up towards the wing. Coleman from behind. Can't gather the ball. Has a chance again. Handball away. Too severe for Colinuke. Here's a chance for Couch. Couch's kick along the boundary line. Well, did he try and keep it in? One wonders. It is a boundary throw in on centre wing. And Brian Royal in trouble down there, Don Scott. Yes, he's, he is, Ian, and um, he strained his hamstring. I don't know how bad. It doesn't look too bad, but the way they've strapped it up, he will not be taking any further part in this game. Handley and Coleman do battle from the boundary throw in. Thump away by Baxter. Colin Yook gets tackled when not in possession. Liberatore plays on as free the kick, advantage free kick. It was a free kick. No advantage. Incidentally, the attendance today, just over 68,000. Colin Yook, oh, bad kick. He's kicked it straight to Scott. Who comes a cross goal. Geelong, full of running here this afternoon. Simpson, he's played pretty well. Up towards Miles. Started on the bench for Geelong. Miles kick up towards right half forward. That wasn't too well delivered. Of, uh, Peter Riccardi, no chance. And boundary throw it in front of the MCC members stand. Simpson 19 kicks and five hand passes, Peter. Ablett sits the bench. Five goals the difference. Ablett has kicked four of those. Over the head of both Ruckman at the boundary throwing. Chris Gray certainly haven't thrown in the sponge. They're fighting it right out. Mansfield's kick up towards Justin Charles, who lopes after it in front of Barry Stoneham, but all to no avail. And it's out of bounds again. Under 13 minutes left in this match. After half time, really has been one way traffic in Geelong's favour. Charles and Stoneham. Barry Stoneham leading the charge after half time. He went to centre half back. Simpson, yet another possession onto Miles, his third AFL club, formerly of the West Coast and Collingwood. Coleman gets dragged down, slaps the ball further forward to the advantage of his side, and picked up by Matthew Mansfield. Lands it at left half forward. Stone him over the top with Charles. Couldn't take the mark. Boundary throw it again. Yeah, Stone has been terrific at centre half back. Just the 15 kicks, but just they've been very effective. Yes, he's uh, plugged that hole very well in the key defence post. After the catch trailed by 16 points at the main chain. And here he contests again and wins it. Tried to get it to Scott. Hinkley's there. Hinkley from right half back. Kicks high and long up towards the centre wing position. Coleman has to go the spoil. Does that effectively. Couch gets unloaded as he kicks and kicks out of bounds on the full. So good pressuring by the Bulldogs. And the free kick to be taken at left centre wing by Steve Wallace. Wallace's short kick is OK and the mark was taken by Grant. But there's still two kicks from goal, Footscray. Going to kick it long into the pocket. Looking for Del Rey. McGrath back there. Punches it away. The ball still inside the boundary line. Now it's forced over by Malakalis. 
And the Geelong fans pretty happy with Tim McGrath there on field as Corcoran prepares to take his place on the field. And Tony Campbell is the Footscray player coming off. Atkins over the top. Liberatore. Liberatore shot for goal. Del Rey and McGrath again. Ball forced over. The boundary throw in the right forward pocket for Footscray. Danny Del Rey has kicked eight. Billy Brownless has kicked seven. And Stonen to do the ruck work with Charles. Goes down to the front. Scott leaves it behind. Colin is there. Can't get the ball clear. And the umpire will be forced to bounce. Only about 15 or 20 metres from the Footscray goal. 21 goals, 13 to 17-7. Gary Ablett, you see in the picture, just doing his warm-ups. Charles off the ground. Has he kicked a goal? No, he hasn't. He's missed. One goal, two, his tally. Gary Ablett at one end was successful, and Charles unsuccessful. Campbell and Royal on the bench. And Gary Ablett goes to the phone, presumably taking some advice from Malcolm Blight. Tim McGrath kicks in, favouring the outer side. Del Rey has to punch the ball clear, lands it in the arms of Brown, who spent a fair bit of time on the bench after being dragged earlier in the game. Stanfield couldn't take the mark. Mansfield again. He's been very elusive, close to goal. Kicks long. Brown is the target. Yes, and marks. Gee, she never marked that, really. Look, totally out of the contest. And just within a couple of strides, Ken Reynolds kept suggesting there might have been some interference, but Brown is just with a one hand. Just watch this again. Mansfield once more. Well, it was nip and tuck there, but should never have got there, Brownless. So Billy Brownless can equal the record of eight goals in a qualifying final. Del Rey's got eight today. So is Brownless. Eight goals, four kicked by Bill Brownless. Danny Del Rey has kicked eight straight. And some of those um, unobtrusive type players for Geelong that have got them up, players like uh, Mansfield, Merriman, uh, not Merriman, Mansfield and Simpson, I should say. Simpson's had a terrific game. He's had uh, 25 Still touches cool. and just done the right thing at the right time. And so it's 11 7 to 3 4 after half time, and Brown is joining Michael Moncrief, Bernie Quinlan, Warren Ralph, and Danny Delray kicking eight goals in a qualifying final. Liberatore hasn't stopped today, has he? He certainly tried. Barging his way through Handley, quick hand pass. But the Cats again are going to run this out of defence. Wills has been great since he came on. Some of his runs out of uh, defence have been superb. Barnes, and we've said a lot about him. John Barnes gets it to Gary Hocking. He goes for home again, and there's another one. Well, Hocking's Ross, kicked through. Ross, you and I, I think we're at the same, right at the same time, weren't we? John Barnes. We've heard so much criticism of him. He's had a try at Essendon. It yes. wasn't all that successful. But, gee, he's been good today. Well, he's had to fill the shoes of Stone and he's had to go to centre-half back. And just watch this little tap. It's all that needs in footy. Just the smart thinking. Obviously got a good call from Hocking. Knew his teammate was there. And it's as, it's as good as kicking the goal himself. He's set it up very well. So Gary Hocking has kicked three goals. Billy Brownless up the front has kicked eight. Gary Ablett on the interchange bench kicked four before leaving the ground about seven minutes ago. And for Footscray, Danny Del Rey has kicked eight. But they haven't kicked too many since half time, Footscray. Two goals, one to be exact. Gary Hocking leaves it behind, but he goes after it and works very, very hard at ground level. Umpire will call for a bounce once again. Eight minutes left in the qualifying final and the winner goes into the second semi-final next weekend and the loser of course has to go back and play St Kilda free kick out of the ruck contest it's going to Coleman quickly handballs away to Hawkins in turn to Atkins Atkins kick is smothered Geelong have got plenty of numbers now Hughes takes it from Gary Hockey he'll run short kick now Oh, good hands. Very strong hands, Mansfield. And he marks between the centre and centre-half forward. Looking for a short pass, but there's not much on. And there's no one in the goal square now. You'll have to kick it high for Brownless to get some sort of a run at it. He's gone for the torpedo punt kick. It falls in short. It's bounced close to the line, and Footscray will concede a rush behind. 
So 23, 14 to 17, 8. What's that? Uh, 42 points when Footscray led by 16 points at half time. One way traffic, isn't it, Robbo? Yes. Stanfield making a lead. Coleman at the back out mark by Brown. He'd be keen to do well to cement a place on the side. Hocking. And what a great second half he's treated us to. Mark, yes, taken by Peter Riccardi in front of Bernard Tui. Through the cramp again. 20 touches to Peter Riccardi. He's worked hard off a wing. Will we'll work hard after half time, haven't they? Wills would love to run with the ball. We've seen that today. Having a shot at goal and registering a minor score. By Andrew Wills, his first score of the day. Famous name in football circles, of course, Wills. One of the founders of the game. Keenan Reynolds. And Hawkins seems to be moving all right after that heavy knock he got. It hasn't been in the playoffs in the second half. Great mark taken by Hughes. What a leap. What a grab. The cat's legs full of running. Rallis! Can he break the record in a qualifying final? He's kicked eight goals, four. He's tied at the moment with four players, one of whom is Danny Delray at the other end. The others we've mentioned before, Moncrief, Quinlan and Ralph. Oh, superb grab. It's well set up again. There's two uh, two marks. Better ones you wouldn't see. Hughes first, then Brownless. So Brownless to break the record in a qualifying final. Nine goals, if he's accurate. I don't think so, or is he? Yes, he is. That's the record. So Billy Brownless gets the record number of goals in a qualifying final. The Cats 24th. The difference is 49 points. And it's a cakewalk in the end. Yes, and full credit to Brownless. He's had a fairly indifferent season. As you see, Scott come up and have it back on, but he's just risen to the occasion at the right time. Kicked three goals in the first, two in the second, one in the third, now three in this last quarter. It's a terrific effort. Well done. Well, if we go back to uh, Carrara, midway through the season, it was Billy Brownless that kicked the behind that gave Geelong the record score in VFL, AFL. Hinkley dropping the ball. And Corcoran has the free kick for Footscray. But Brownless, with one more goal, has the chance to be the leading goal scorer in a qualifying final. Del Rey also has that chance. Tackled by Brown. McGrath, Stoneham. Some uh, good pressure by the Footscray forwards, but they all look quite forlorn now. I think they feel their chances of winning this game have well and truly disappeared. And they'll have to regroup pretty quickly the challenge will come from the saints next weekend hinkley a high kick in towards center half back play on simpson caught by atkins atkins hand pass not bad baxter baxter shot for goal nothing going right for footscray now as darren baxter kicks his second behind 79 to 24 15 Tim McGrath will kick the ball back in for Geelong and he elects to go to that far side well outside the 50 meter area Handley and Coleman free kick to Handley on the shoulders says the umpire Hinkley who's been solid but generally is Wills at left half back like tending more towards center wing decides to run towards the center of the ground and goes long with the kick towards half forward. Oh, good mark taken by Barnes in front of Barry Stanfield. Well, the stats don't look that impressive, do they? But he's been good. But he's been in the play, Pete. Mm. He's presented himself quite often and he's made a contest out of the ball when it's in his area. 24 hit outs. So Scott Wine certainly missed by the Bulldogs today. And it's been a great Geelong effort after half time. Stanfield stands the mark. just a tad too far out to score we'll see he's given the decent sort of a chance what a roost that's not bad goal umpire looks field it's a goal so john barnes gets his second goal and geelong's 25th and that's flying the flag 
Yes, it's a great effort by Barnes because he's one of those players who, as Robert mentioned, has had some problems during his career. But to stand up uh, in this company has been terrific. And as the game's gone on, he's got better. And he'll have something to look forward to next week. 25-15, and that's a record score in a qualifying final, beating Richmond's score in 1972. So, plenty of records being broken at the MCG this afternoon. Liberatore, a fresh air shot. Coleman tries to get clear. And finally, it's Hawkins, who's been in the lane of the missing since that heavy blow. And coming out with the ball is Stephen Handley. Away to Simpson. Simpson from half-back. Short kick. Couch. Intelligently over the top. Will it sit for Mansfield? He'll have to get rid of it pretty quickly. Still must get it on. Now he does. But the kick will fall in short. Ooh, Geelong mark taken by Buse and Andrew Buse has been a uh, good contributor for Geelong 14 kicks and 5 hand passes his kick to the front of the square Brownless punched away back towards Hickbot can't get through hand pass, finishes with Liberatore he's well tackled but he gets it away to Tui, Tui short kick looking for Coleman and it's knocked over by Handley for a boundary throw in Right down here in front of a centre wing member's side, Geelong. 25-15, Footscray 17-9. So it's nine goals now, the advantage with Geelong. And who would have thought that at half-time? Yes, that's a pretty good question. I haven't got the answer, Robbo. That was just about a throw then from Malakalis. Atkins kicks it up towards left half-forward for Footscray. Couch has been brilliant after the main change, the Bradley medalist. Justin Charles won't catch him. Few would. But Charles chasing, the shepherd keeps him at bay, delivered well from Hinkley, and he's kicked it up to Brown. And Brown is off, Hawkins almost has him. Gee, he limped there, Hawkins, I hope he's okay. They certainly need him if they're going to fight out the premiership later. Hinkley again, moves downfield well. It's a behind. But, uh, Doug Hawkins in the land of the missing since the main change. As I said, he got a heavy blow in the third quarter. 25-16, it is a record score. In a qualifying final, Reynolds to kick in. Beats by two points. The score kicked by Richmond in 1972 against Collingwood. That was a pretty high-scoring game too because the Magpies finished up with 18-12. This is Hickmott. Kicks into the pocket. It won't be a score. It is out of bounds. I think young Hickmott will uh, be interested in having a look at a replay of this. Just an extra, what, pace of a final as yes. distinct from the home-and-home -home games. And... Now he's shown enough to indicate that he's going to be successful. Oh, Ablett! Oh, you don't mind. Five goals to Gary Ablett. Well, what do you say, Pete? You just let it go, don't you, when you see something like that? Well, his last goal was a freak, wasn't it? He's come up with that one. Well, he was on the interchange bench. I'm sure they took him off the ground, probably because they thought he may have needed. Well, he often has done uh, similar things from boundary throws, not stand his ground, but jump from behind and grab the ball there, then have a... A swing of the goals from that occasion just stood his ground, read the fire of the ball better than anyone else. That's a pretty clever goal. <laughs> uh, fantastic play by Gary Ablett to kick his fifth goal. Brownless has kicked nine, 26 16 to 17 9. The ball at half forward for Footscray. Miles overruns it, but he's helped out by Malakalis. Handball back to Miles, looking to carry the football. Did it well, too. The option was good. Simpson. Long kick by that player to half forward. No mark taken. The Footscray players back there still working very hard. Stanfield over the top to Kellett. Kellett's kick. High towards half forward. And no mark taken. Here comes Colinuk. He's forced to kick very quickly and it's going to get chopped off. Ken Hinkley, who was firing at goal one minute, now he's back between the back pocket and half back, takes the mark, but a free kick is going to McGrath. He gives the hand pass away to Hinkley. Hinkley over the top, in trouble, Buse, but no, he's not. He's got the composure, but his kick falls in short. It's marked by Charles, and it's all over. Geelong, Geelong win the qualifying final and go into the second semi. Harding, out right by Dia, taken by Jarman, a tired kick. Floats it down inside the 50. Kemp was hanging on initially, but he was held. Evans charged down by Allen. Well played there by Condon to keep it alive. A 
now the run of Matera, a factor in this game. He kicks it towards the wing. Here's Jenke, just over a minute remaining. He gets it to Pritchard. Pritchard spears it in. Dunstall needs to hang on, and he didn't. Closed down by McIntosh. Knocked on by Jakovic. And the Eagles looking to clear the zone, but they're denied. Resolute play there by Pritchard. Eventually, they work it forward. Paul Deere kicks inside the 50, but going back, Wilson. Timely mark by Wilson. He plays on. Floats it back to Pike, who's at centre-half back. Well, there's no need to hurry now. No. Don, Don Pike can take as long as he likes. That was with Pike. The Eagles will advance. Hawthorne for the first time in over a decade. Now, in week one, an elimination final as Anderson. In fact, it's more than that because this is their 11th campaign. McIntosh, Kemp over the top. They're just quite content to lock it up. Seconds ticking away now. It's all over. The Eagles may be allowed a little celebration tonight. The Hawks campaign comes to an end as it did a couple of years ago. The Eagles will continue on in their fight for their first flag. A lot of mutual respect between these two clubs as well. It's been a wonderful contest with the Eagles just putting their noses in front in the last quarter and hanging on. Hawthorne hit by injuries, had to do some reshuffling early on. They did it, and to their credit, they held on. But the victors are the Eagles. The final scoreline here at Subiaco. West Coast 14-16, 100. Hawthorne 12-15, 87. Marvellous goal by Jason Dunstall there. Now, talking about the quality of goals, can you remember a game with so many just freakish goals as we've seen today and what wasn't a high-scoring game? No, well, as I said in the uh, in the call during the match, Dennis, so if, if we're having a look at the goals of the day, there'd be about eight or nine of the goals from today's game would be featuring in the goals of the week. Peter Matera, his third goal there, a very timely one. A goal-scoring wingman, quite outstanding, getting three today. Strong mark by Dunstall. Yes, he, uh, of course, won't break the record now, but 145 goals in the season, Dennis. That's a magnificent performance. Good enough for the Brownlow? He'll go very close. He did kick 12 goals or more on four occasions, so he should feature very well in the Brownlow. But uh, he can hold his head up, as can many of the Hawthorne players. They were just a little bit undermanned in the end against a very good running side in this West Coast Eagles. Pike, who played very well today, snapping. Yes. And that was a big goal, that one. Still with Hawkins, now Del Rey, who's been in spectacular form to Grant. Early goal to Footscray. What a start. Now Fletcher, tackled by Mansfield, was excellent. Coming away with the ball is Stephen Crediop. Good play by the halfback. Crediop to half forward, and there's an excellent mark. Grant's on fire, Chris Grant. Hand pass to McPherson, an open goal looms. Steve McPherson drops it right through the middle. Touches it on the ground, just in time. Brings it to the pump and he's found Newport. And Newport should get this ball moving very quickly to Lockett. Now he is. The high floating kick. Oh, Lockett a chance to use his strength. There he is. Oh, he's too good. Too strong. That was a perfect kick there. Big Tony Lockett. Kicks hard at the ball. And he goes. Looking for options. Goes very short. Delray, Shanahan. Delray, well played, brilliantly played. McPherson. Delray can kick.